Cleveland rocks. Cleveland also blows your mind via science fiction. Harlan Ellison, one of the greatest sci-fi writers of all time, came to his hometown one of the few times since he ran away as a teenager and started writing professionally to honor the creators of Superman, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, who went to Glenville High School, with my step-grandfather, Wilson Hirschfeld, who's said to have been the inspiration for Clark Kent. So me, Superman's step-grandson. Not fibbing. Google it. Google it. But first, watch this really cool interview with Harlan Ellison from the Morning Exchange, a rare remote live broadcast, Joel Rose interviewing him on June 17, 1988. Ellison was in town for a Superman conference. So as rare as Harlan Ellison interviews are, this one's even rarer because he's talking about something besides himself. One of America's great writers, short story writers. I think everybody out there has read a number of his pieces. Harlan Ellison. Let's give him a big greeting here this morning. Good morning, Harlan. Nice morning. to have you with us. It's nice to be here. Uh, everybody uh, measures everybody else on the basis of their Cleveland origins. And you have Cleveland origins. I have Cleveland origins up to the years, yes. I was Tell born here. Tell us about that. Well, I was born here and... Uh, Moved to Painesville, about 30 miles northeast of here, and ran away when I was 13. And uh, this is the first time I've been back in a number of years. I spoke here a couple of years ago at Case Western Reserve, but uh, I live in Los Angeles and uh, don't get back much. Have things changed at all since you were 13? Oh, good Lord, yes. <laughs> uh, I was, we were driving around the, uh, the public square yeah. uh, last night, and the, and the bookstore where I used to spend all my time is a giant building with uh, uh, no name on it. I don't know what they do in there, but it's not a bookstore. That is uh, probably the uh, BP uh, Oil the building is probably the one you were looking ah, down at. Down by the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. You're right, right. Basically, Cleveland looks the same, though. I, found, I saw the old building that I worked in a lithograph plant when they flunked me at East High, uh, and I didn't graduate on time and uh, had to go and work for the summer. You have, uh, in your writings, uh, dealt with some of the kind of subjects we're talking about today. Are these kind of things, uh, science uh, topics, uh, science fiction, you want to call it, been of interest to you? Well, I've been uh, primarily, I, I, I'm here because of Siegel and Schuster and Superman. Uh, I've been a comic book fan since I was, I guess, about five years old. In fact, my first comic was bought here in Cleveland, 1939. And uh, I'm here to honor Siegel and Schuster. That, their creation, the Superman character, is one of the most remarkable fictional creations ever. If you look at what you take to be uh, 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 great literary works, everybody will talk about uh, you know, Dostoevsky, or they'll talk about Kafka, and they sort of ignore a comic character, but the test of time is what, is what it takes. And there may be kids in, uh, in Nome, Alaska, who've never heard of Hamlet, or a kid in Borneo who's never heard of Don Quixote, but everyone on the planet has heard of Superman. It's one of the five characters created uh, in all of uh, the history of literature that everybody knows. The others are Robin Hood and Sherlock Holmes and Mickey Mouse. And uh, that's, that's a very important thing. It's one of our cultural heritages. And uh, having a huge show like this to honor the character and to honor Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster is a remarkable and amazing thing. It's to Cleveland's credit. And yet, you believe that they got the short end of the stick. Uh, the authors, the creators of Superman did not get what they were entitled to. Tell us about that. Well, it's, uh, this is fairly common knowledge. Most everybody knows about this. For, for many years, the uh, the parent company of DC Comics, which was uh, originally called National Periodical Publications, never gave Siegel and Schuster a dime from the millions and millions and millions of dollars that were made licensing Superman from films, from television, from books, from the comics. They got nothing. It got so bad, in fact, that uh, uh, Joe Schuster, the artist, was working in New York as a mailboy, as a mail delivery man back in the 50s or 60s, I guess it was, and delivered mail to DC Comics, and no one knew who he was. It was so bad, and they were so poor, in fact, that when the Superman musical opened on Broadway, Jerry Siegel stood out on the curb crying because he could not afford a ticket to get in to see 
this musical that was based on his own work. And it went on that way for many, many, many years until, oh, the late 60s, when uh, a number of artists in the field said, this is shameful. And they began an assault on uh, DC Comics at that time to pay uh, a stipend, money, to Siegel and & Schuster. And they now do get a regular amount of money. They're not allowed to talk about any of the things that have been done to them. Jerry Siegel has now had two heart bypass operations. I talked to, uh, to uh, Jerry and his wife, Joanna, yesterday in Los Angeles. Joe Schuster's almost totally blind. They both live in, uh, they both live in Los Angeles. And it's a tragic story. It's, um, it's one of those instances of corporate negligence and um, I suppose corporate heartlessness. And, and when it was brought to the attention of the parent outfit, something was done about it, but it still goes on to some degree. And uh, we waste our artists. When they're dead, we put on things like this that are wonderful to honor the character and to honor the artists. But we don't bother to say anything to them when they're alive and when they need the help. Um, I know most of, the, uh, most of the time in an exposition like this, everything is sweetness and light and happiness and joy. And I, I don't mean to be the specter at the banquet, but it has to be said. It really needs to be said. Do artists, writers, uh, pictorial artists today protect themselves better, perhaps, as a result of what happened to the creators of Superman? Well, the comic book industry is a very peculiar and strange industry. It's very much like a plantation in the antebellum South. Uh, artists and writers, some of them, the few who are at the very, very top and have managed to get themselves some prestige and some, some public attention, they manage to get pretty good deals. But for the most part, it's a company store. It's run by two major comic book companies, and they keep people pretty much in line. They decide what the readers will see, they decide uh, how the characters will be used, and um, it is always and invariably and at bottom line, business. And they don't care if they take a character like, say, Superman or the Shadow or uh, whatever character may be and do whatever it takes to sell more copies. I mean, that's what they're in business for. And yet, at the same time, you think, well, there should be a little continuing love and affection for these characters. We grew up on these characters. New generations of people are reading about them and reading them in adult magazines. And there should be some adherence to the purity of the art. I, I know you don't talk about this very much, but I understand that you wrote, actually wrote an episode of Star Trek. And I know these folks here are so much into that. I wonder if you would talk about a little bit this morning. What, what did you have to do with Star Trek? I thought the statute of limitations had run out on that. <laughs> Nobody will let you I mean, you, you can't prosecute a man for a crime many years after it <laughs> happened. Yes, I, I did a... Uh, uh, am I allowed to put my feet on the table? Why not? Sure, sure let's do that. Hey, come on. All right, all right. Um, Wait a minute, do we have holes in our shoes? No, we don't. All right. If we had holes in our shoes, we could run for president. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I did a segment of Star Trek many years ago. Uh, before the show ever went on the air, I was involved uh, with it, and uh, I had my run-ins with, uh, with uh, Gene Roddenberry, and uh, the show that went on was not one that I was particularly happy with. People tell me that it's the most popular episode of Which the show. Which episode was it? It's called The City on the Edge of Forever. You folks know that? The Trekkies know it. The Trekkies love it. You should be happy. Well, <laughs> see, my, 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 my view, it's like, um, it's like you make this great dinner, and it was really terrific, and it was nice and hot, and it was on the table, and everybody comes late, and it's kind of cold and stale. It's all icky with the dried gravy on it, you know, white and Ooh. nasty. And, and everybody says, oh, but it was a terrific dinner. And you say, you should have seen it when it was hot. <laughs> and that's the way I feel about my script. Uh, it was a killer. And what went on the air was OK, because I find it hard to be humble about my writing. A lot of other things I can be very humble about, but, I, but I'm a pretty good writer. And I wrote a, an awfully good script, I thought, and uh, got the things up, that, huh? Yeah, it got carved up, as it always does in television. Yeah. I'm going to be speaking tonight. I'm doing a lecture here from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at the Music Hall. Uh, the universe is invited to come down and hear me, and I'll talk about all of that and insult people. And uh, well, We want to thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, Joel. It's a pleasure to be here. Harlan Ellison, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, you are going to meet Superman illustrators who will show you how it works, okay? First, we're going to have a look at the weather with Dan. Thank you for watching Cleveland Live Music. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And there's GoFundMe and Patreon information in the video descriptions. Thanks for making the channel grow so much.